Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Scott Giacomucci. I am a trauma therapist and educator. And in this video, I wanted to take a little bit of time and look at the ACA laundry list as it relates to complex post-traumatic stress disorder or CPTSD. The idea for this video came about from a group of colleagues that I was with a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about ACA's laundry list. And I said, let me revisit that laundry list. I haven't looked at that in a while. And when I looked at it, I was shocked at how much overlap there is between the laundry list items and traumatic stress symptoms, especially complex PTSD. So. I thought I would look into it a bit more and create a video and see what others thought. I also want to emphasize that although I've been a big fan of ACA for, for several years and have attended meetings, it's not a program that I attend regularly. And so I want to approach this in the spirit of humility, that there might be things that I'm missing. And I'm really curious to hear about those in the comments. But some of the things that I was able to discover about the history of ACA is that it started in 1978 and the laundry list was written about the same time however it wasn't until 1991 that the book the laundry list was published and then later that the literature was further developed and so when i look at the timeline here compared to say alcoholics anonymous which was created in 1935 and the timeline of the development of ptsd and cptsd as diagnoses PTSD was recognized in 1980 as a diagnosis, but CPTSD wasn't even first introduced until 1988. And it took many years beyond that before it was added to the ICD-10, I believe it was, in 20, around 2019. So uh, more recently. So considering the history, it makes sense to me that ACA, more than any of the other 12-step programs, talks about trauma and talks about some of the phenomenons that are labeled in post-traumatic stress disorder. ACA, ACA was developed and emerged in a time where the word trauma and the concept of traumatic stress were more, much more recognized and discussed compared to 1935 when Alcoholics Anonymous was formed. However, it, it certainly seems like ACA was well before its time in the development of the laundry list and many of the ideas uh, within ACA that seem to articulate the experience of relational trauma and complex PTSD. So both these laundry list traits and the CPTSD symptoms emerge because of prolonged exposure to relational trauma, usually relational trauma in childhood. And often within the relationship with a caregiver, with a protective or nurturing figure, Someone that was supposed to be there to, to protect us, to care for us, ended up hurting us, neglecting us, or abandoning us. So this is one of the obvious and most common overlaps between complex trauma, which leads to complex PTSD, and the ACA laundry list traits. So ACA is explicitly highlighting that these traits emerge in adult children of alcoholics or dysfunctional parents. So in the diagnosis of complex post-traumatic stress disorder, there are six different symptom clusters. I'm going to run through them quickly, and then I'm going to connect the 14 laundry list traits to these six symptoms. So these aren't in any specific order. Avoidance is one of the original symptom clusters of PTSD and also of complex PTSD. Avoiding people, places, things, thoughts, feelings, memories related to the trauma. And you see this in items 9 and 10 of the laundry list of really stuffing our feelings is really articulated well in the 10th item on the laundry list. That we have stuffed our feelings from our traumatic childhoods and have lost the ability to feel or express our feelings because it hurts so much. We're really in denial about it. In this avoidance symptom, I would also add the, the fear of abandonment that's talked about in the laundry list as well as the compulsion to be in relationship with people who we need to care give and take care of. And in doing so, we avoid our own feelings and our own needs and our own experience. 
The second symptom cluster of complex PTSD and PTSD has to do with arousal and reactivity. And so this is really emphasized in the third item on the laundry list that we're frightened by angry people and any personal criticism. And also in the 14th item that para-alcoholics are reactors rather than actors, reactors. So the, the entire symptom cluster is named reactivity and arousal. So this is the hyperarousal, the hypervigilance, the being afraid and frightened by anger, the fear of authority figures, being a reactor. This is really emphasized also in the first of the 14 traits. The third symptom cluster of PTSD and complex PTSD has to do with intrusive images, flashbacks and nightmares, but also of re-experiencing the past trauma. And so in this category of re-experiencing, we have re-experiencing it visually, re-experiencing it somatically and physically. And I like to also emphasize that we tend to reenact the trauma, the relational trauma in unhealthy relationships. And this is really at the core of ACA's teachings and recovery program to realize that we tend to become what they call para-alcoholics, take on the characteristics of the disease even without picking up the drink. This is the 13th trait in the laundry list. And that we tend to either become alcoholics, marry alcoholics, or find another compulsive personality such as a workaholic, to try to fulfill our abandonment needs. And this is the fourth trait on the laundry list. So both of these are really articulated in the laundry list items and also in complex PTSD in, their, in the reenactment of relationships and in another symptom cluster that has to do with interpersonal difficulties, which relates to the struggling with trust and intimacy, codependency, fear of abandonment, confusing love and pity, and the experience of detachment and isolation. So this really touches on multiple items in the laundry list. This uh, additional symptom cluster PTSD. Items number one, isolation and afraid of people. Number two, approval seeking from people. Number nine, confusing love and pity and loving people that we can rescue. Number 12, becoming a dependent personality, afraid of abandonment and willing to do anything to hold on to that relationship to avoid the painful feelings of abandonment or loss. And the last symptom cluster of PTSD, which is also in touched upon in complex PTSD, is negative moods, negative beliefs about ourselves, a negative view of ourselves. And so this is really emphasized throughout the laundry list in items 5, 6, 7, and 11, and that we live life from the viewpoint of a victim and are attracted by the weakness in our love and friendship relationships, that we have an overdeveloped sense of responsibility, and it's easier for us to be concerned with others rather than ourselves, which allows us to avoid looking at our own faults. This also relates to the avoidance symptom cluster of CPTSD, that we feel guilty when we stand up for ourselves, and instead we give in to others. This is the seventh item on the laundry list, and that we judge ourselves harshly and have a very low sense of self-esteem. So these four different items on the laundry list really align pretty strongly to the symptom cluster of CPTSD. Now the next symptom cluster of CPTSD has to do with identity and interpersonal difficulties, the next two symptom clusters. So just to, a simple way of organizing it in your mind is that PTSD has three original symptom clusters and a fourth added, avoidance, intrusions, re-experiencing, arousal, reactivity, and then negative moods and beliefs. And then complex PTSD has the, the negative beliefs about ourselves, feeling like we're a failure, the interpersonal difficulties, and the difficulty with emotional regulation. So the negative view of self, difficulty with identity, gets discussed in the second item on the laundry list, that we become approval seekers, lose our identity in the process, and that we live life from the viewpoint of victims. The interpersonal difficulties outline the new add-on symptom cluster, a complex PTSD, is discussed all throughout the laundry list struggling with trust and intimacy and dependence and fear of abandonment, confusing love and pity, detachment and isolation, 
And then the emotional dysregulation is highlighted throughout the laundry list as well. The really struggling to deal with emotions and developing really unhealthy addictions or dependencies in order to deal with those emotions. So as you can see, these 14 traits of an adult child of an alcoholic or dysfunctional parent really are articulating basically what we call complex PTSD today. Whether we call it the traits of an adult child or we call it the symptoms of CPTSD, the impact and the outcome is the same, that they really have a profound and negative impact on our self-esteem, on our identity, on our ability to be in healthy relationships, on our families, on our ability to feel confident and feel like we have a sense of self-worth and to deal with our emotions in healthy ways. So I really want to emphasize in this video, not only that there's a strong overlap between these two ways of thinking about the same phenomenon, but also that recovery is possible. That recovery communities like ACA are out there, are easily accessible, are free, and you can really find folks that have experienced the same thing as you or very similar things who are engaging in recovery and can help you enter recovery yourself. So I strongly recommend seeking out ACA meetings or other 12-step meetings that you might identify with. Though ACA has become my favorite because of the emphasis on trauma and inner child work and relationships, which is not emphasized in the same way in the other 12-step programs. I also want to highlight the availability of trauma therapy, that there's really effective trauma therapies such as EMDR, internal family systems therapy, psychodrama, group therapy. All these therapies can be incredibly helpful in healing from complex post-traumatic stress disorder or traumatic childhoods. And of course, there's many other non-therapeutic avenues we can take to heal mindfulness, yoga, meditation, exercise, self-development, personal development, self-awareness, journaling, writing, all of these tools can be really helpful in recovery journeys as well. So I really hope that you found this video useful and helpful, and I hope that this helps you either in your own recovery, better understanding your experience, or in helping others who are in recovery, others who have experienced trauma or complex trauma. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to write in the comments what you found helpful in this video, or let me know if there's anything you feel like I missed, if there's any other connections between the ACA laundry list and complex PTSD that you feel like I, I did not mention. And if you'd like to be notified about future videos on the channel, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button and stay connected.